Come for it. Come on. Yeah, it's worth coming to get. Oh, good job. In this video, we're gonna be making a simple four ingredient turkey and parsley dog treat. Hey guys, welcome. If you're new here, my name is Jessica. I'm the furry family coach and I do all kinds of videos on dog training, dog behavior, canine enrichment, and canine nutrition. And so if you're interested in any of that, go ahead and click that subscribe button. When you do, a bell will pop up. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. So let's get right into this simple four ingredient dog treat. This is actually inspired by a recipe that I saw on Pinterest. But the recipe I saw on Pinterest is something I would never actually make for my dog. It was actually telling me to use like bouillon cubes, which there is no way. Just let's just talk about the sodium alone in a bouillon cube. I would not give that to my dog. So I kind of configured what I would want to put in a dog treat and we're going to go from there. So I'm starting with turkey. You can also use chicken. This is about 14 ounces. This is going to make a big batch. If you don't want to make such a huge batch, then half it, no problem. But I've got about 14 ounces of turkey right here. And all I'm going to do, you can do this in a food processor if you have a food processor. I happen to like my immersion blender. So I'm going to use my immersion blender and I'm just going to put it on a pretty low setting so I don't splash everything up on me. And I'm going to just kind of puree this a little bit. So I, a little bit of chunk is not a problem, but I don't want it to be all chunky. So I'm just gonna blend this up a little bit. And I actually forgot to mention, I preheated my oven to 350 degrees. So that's what you're gonna wanna do first. Um, my oven preheated pretty quickly. So it's already there waiting for me to get this recipe done, but that's what you're gonna wanna do first. I also have some parchment paper out and a baking sheet. And go ahead and choose the cookie cutter of your choice because we are gonna be using a cookie cutter. If you don't have any cookie cutters, don't worry about it. You don't have to go buy any. You can just use a knife to cut out uh, shapes or just squares or just circles, whatever you wanna do. It's The shape isn't, isn't important. Um, but do try to make sure you are considering your dog's size. So if you have a small dog, don't make huge treats unless you just want to break them up. Um, after you bake them, if you have a large dog, then you know either small or large treats are gonna be fine because small treats are great for training. So I've got that. The next thing I'm gonna do, and I'll show you here, it's not completely like a paste or a pate. There are a little bit of chunks in here, but not a whole lot. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna get my immersion blender out of the way. The next thing we're gonna do is add an egg. And one thing I do wanna tell you about adding an egg, either add the egg first in the bowl or use a separate bowl to crack the egg because one, you don't want shells that you're digging around in other food to try to get out. But also if you happen to find a bad egg, which is rare, but it does happen, you don't wanna add that to ingredients you already have set aside, especially if it's you know the most expensive ingredient, which would be the meat. So now that I've got my egg, I'm gonna go ahead and add that in to my turkey in the bowl, and then my big mixing bowl. And the next thing I'm going to do, I have some parsley that I have already washed, and I'm just going to start chopping up my parsley. I want a couple of tablespoons of parsley to go in here, and I'm just gonna do a rough chop. Um, it doesn't really have to be finely chopped unless you know your dog is gonna prefer it that way. I don't know, I don't think most dogs care <laughs> if it's finely chopped or roughly chopped, but parsley smells amazing and it's just gonna add, I'm just gonna do a really rough chop here and get a couple of tablespoons of parsley to add in. All right, so now I'm just I'm gonna mix these three ingredients together and kind of judge how wet or how dry it is. Uh, I do have some turkey broth set aside. If I need to add any moisture, you can of course add water, but why waste the turkey broth or the chicken broth if you're gonna use chicken? I wouldn't waste it. 
So um, our fourth ingredient is going to be almond flour. And I'm only going to, again, I've, I'm kind of butchering <laughs> a recipe that I found on Pinterest and I'm kind of just adjusting to suit what I know my dog would like best, which is going to be real meat. And I would never, again, feed my dog bouillon cubes. Um, they're just not, that, that's not a healthy option. So I am just going to add a touch of almond flour. Okay, so I've got about three eighths of a cup of almond flour in here so far, but it is still just a little bit too wet. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another quarter cup, which is gonna give me five eighths total. Let's see if that's gonna get my mixture dry enough to be able to use a cookie cutter to cut out that's looking more like a dough to me. Again, I, I want the meat, whether you're using chicken or turkey, like I am, to be the primary, the main ingredient. That's the idea. So, let's give it a try. Let's see if we can cut out some cookies. So now I'm going to take parchment paper I'm going to pour out my mixture onto the parchment paper and I'm just going to kind of flatten it out a little bit with a spoon if you I'm going to use a rolling pin to get an even consistency like the thickness I want it to be even if you don't have a rolling pin, you can just use your spoon to get it all out on a, you know, to an even thickness, something that'll work for you so you know it's gonna cook evenly throughout all of them uh, while you're cooking on your baking sheet. So I got that patted down a bit. Now I'm gonna take a second piece of parchment paper. Now I'm going to take my rolling pen and I'm just going to roll this out until I get it. I'm, I'm happy with the thickness, but I feel like I've got an even thickness in my dough because again, I want them to cook evenly. take my parchment paper I'm just gonna reuse that on my baking sheet so I'm gonna cut it down to size on my baking sheet some almond flour over here with my cookie cutter and I'm just going to start cutting out my little cookies with my cookie cutter and again you know you can choose the shape of your choice to, to make this more fun choose a size that's going to be uh, good for your dog or dogs and just have fun with it
right, so now we've got all of our cookies cut out and on our parchment paper on our baking sheet. The oven is preheated to 350 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and pop these in and I'll be right back with you. All right guys, so I put them in the oven, 350 degrees for 20 minutes, then I let them cool and Kim has already tried them. She approves. These are Kim approved, which means they're Jessica approved. Did we do a good job? Did you do a good job, monkey? We'll see if she takes a second one and that'll really tell you if she likes it or not. Come on. Come on. Yeah, it's worth coming to get. Oh, good job. So I'm gonna keep just a few days worth in an airtight container in the refrigerator. The rest you can freeze. I mean, probably a month up to three months, you could freeze them as long as they don't get freezer burnt. So uh, I like to vacuum seal anything I freeze and they'll keep a lot better that way. And my dog likes them. My dog is incredibly picky. So go ahead and give these a try. Let me know how they turn out. Let me know how your dog likes them. Post in the comments and let me know. Also, take pictures, take video, post it on Insta and tag me. My handle is right down here. I would love to see how much your dog uh, loves these treats. And honestly, they were Pinterest inspired, but I kind of made it up as I went along and they turned out wonderfully. Give them a try. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. When you do, a bell will pop up. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I appreciate you being here and watching this video along with me and I will see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.